Hey guys, and welcome back to a new Composer video. In this video, you will learn how you can implement a drag and drop mechanism in your Jetpack Compose app. This is just a normal native Android product that I have here, but this should also work just fine in a Compose multi-platform environment. So what we'll build is we will have five colorful boxes and a text that we can drag around these boxes. If we do this, if we long click on this text, then we can drag it and drop it into any of these boxes. Little animation is also included. There we go. And that, of course, works for every single box. And of course, you don't need to do this with a text. I will show you a way how you can do this with any type of composable and any type of container. All right, let's dive into it and open our package hierarchy here. And I just want to create a little separate composable here that just contains our five drag and drop boxes and the functionality to be able to just drag something from one box and drop it to another. So let's just create a new composable here in our root package called drag and drop boxes or so. That can be a normal file. In here, we can type comp for composable and then call this drag and drop boxes. We do like to have this modifier here so we can just keep it as it is. And other than that, we don't need any additional parameters. And if we now take a look here at this little demo that I showed you, then in the end, what this layout is, is just a column of five boxes and each box just gets assigned a random color. So let's also start typing that. We have a column, we pass in our modifier, and we just make sure to fill the whole size of our screen. And on here, I would like to um, keep it a little bit flexible by specifying our box count. So how many of these boxes we want to have? In our example, to have five, but you can just freely adjust this. So you also learn how this would work with larger lists. And this can actually also be a val since this will not change. But what needs to be a var is the so-called drag box index, because that is a state we can create with bar remember, and I'm saying, mutable int state of and initially we set that to zero so that will just be the index of the box that currently contains our draggable item so in this case that would be four since it's the um, last item and if we would take this drag it to oops not that one drag it to the first box then the drag box index would be changed to zero again and that's already an important concept to understand about this drag and drop mechanism here and that is that we can't really drag and drop composables in the way we understand this that we really take composable from one box um, remove it there and then put it to another box but we rather structure our ui that each of these boxes can contain such a text and then we just check okay is the drag box index actually currently the same index as the index of the box in our list and if so we show the drag me text and in all other boxes that currently don't correspond to this uh, drag box index which is zero here like this one this one this one and this one we will simply not show this drag me text but it will still be included in that box composable will make more sense when we get to that one more thing we need here is we need a set of colors so we have a val colors that doesn't need to be a state since we just generate this uh, once during um, initialization of this composable so here we can just say okay one to our box count so just for every single box you want to generate a color and we map these different values here to a color where we say, okay, we want to have a random color. Let's pick this color overload that takes in a long. And then we can say, okay, from Kotlin random, that neck is long. And we call copy and set the alpha to 1F. So we just make sure that we have any random color, but at least with 100% um, transparency. Or well, I mean, an alpha value of 1F, not 100% uh, transparency. And now with these three fields, we can now go ahead and uh, start defining our different boxes by saying repeat box count so for every single box count we want to have a box here in our composable we do get a reference to the current index here and then we can start defining our box we assign a modifier here of course which is equal to modifier give this a weight of 1f so that will just evenly distribute these boxes based on the height of our column we we want to make sure that each box fills the whole width of our screen. We want to give the box um, the uh, background color of our colors list. So we set the background color to colors at the index of our current box index. And we, of course, want to center the content of each box. So that will be our drag me text. We want to make sure that it always pops up at the center of our box. And then we can open this block of code here and get rid of the errors. All right. 
So on the one hand, we have our box, which is the container to which we want to be able to drag something. That is what this drag and drop API calls the drag and drop target. So just the target where we want to drop something into. And on the other hand, we have a so-called drag and drop source. So that is the element that we are able to drag into a drag and drop target. And that will obviously be our text here. So how do we really specify that this box here or each box of our um, list of boxes here is really a drag and drop target? Well, we can just use a modifier for that. And that really makes this approach or this drag and drop API very flexible because you can really implement this with any type of composable. So we want to say does drag and drop target. And you can also already see that there is a drag and drop source modifier as well, which we will then have to assign to our text. But for each box, we want to have a drag and drop target, which requires two arguments. On the one hand, should start drag and drop, which is a lambda that has to return a Boolean. And it also gives us such a, a drag and drop event. And based on that event, we should now decide whether we should start this drag and drop or not. So here we can just use the event to use that to determine whether we want to do this or not. And we say, for example, event.mimetypes that contains, and we say clip description dot mime type text plain. And I will get into what this really means here in a moment after we've uh, specified this full modifier here. So no worries at this point. But let's first of all specify this target here, which is a drag and drop target. And this is in the end of callback we have to define that uh, tells us, okay, this is what should happen when we actually drop something into this drag and drop target. And callbacks in Compose should be um, declared with remember, so we don't redeclare them on every single recomposition. And inside this remember block, we can then say, okay, we have an anonymous class, an object of type drag and drop target. Open this here, and then we have on drop here, which is the function, the callback that is invoked once the um, yeah, once we leave or once we drop the text inside of that specific box that we're currently looping over. And I will actually leave this empty for now because I think it makes more sense to write this code once we really also implemented our text composable in here. So the text we can drag because we first of all need to understand how it works to drag something in order to also be able to handle when we uh, drop this dragged item. And that will of course happen in here. Since we also want to have a little animation as you've seen here, so we drag this, Put it in here and we have this little scale up animation and scale down animation where we left it. We can simply do this with an animated visibility. So whenever I want to animate the um, appearance of a specific composable, whether I want to show or hide it, then we can easily use animated visibility for that. Or we just specify a Boolean, whether that's visible, which needs to be a compose state. And whenever that switches, we will animate the uh, composable with our specified animation. Well, in which case is this text visible for this specific box we are looping over? Well, it is if the index of this specific box is actually the same index as our current drag box index. So we can say index is equal to a drag box index. We can then specify the enter transition. So the animation, how this text is animated in. So when we uh, drop it somewhere, this should be a scale in animation plus a fade in animation. And when we exit this, so um, when it leaves a specific box, then we want to scale it out. So we say scale out and fade out. Oops, fade out. And we're still doing complaints here a little bit. So we need to alt enter on this animated visibility and add this explicit this at column, since it seems like it does not want this animated visibility to be inside of this box scope. So let's just add this and then it doesn't complain anymore. And in here, we can now put in our text. And based on the current drag box index, which we still, of course, have to update, we will also change the appearance and animate the appearance of this text inside this animated visibility composable. The text can simply be drag me just as on the left. We can give it a larger font size of something like 40 SP, Alt Enter to import SP. The color can be white. The font weight can be bold. So we actually also do see our text. And now the exciting part starts. We also need a modifier here, but not a drag and drop target, but a drag and drop source, since this is now the composable we want to be able to drag. So we specify this drag and drop source, which by the way, all complain here that we need to opt into these typical experimental APIs. So let's just opt into that for our whole file. And then we should also get rid of the error um, that we got up here. Yes. 
And this drag and drop source uh, grants us access to a specific scope, this drag and drop source scope, which for some reason Android Studio doesn't display here, but we definitely do have access to that. And here we can now specify how the drag should actually be initiated. So first of all, we want to detect some tab gestures that is very similar to um, another modifier we had. I think it's a pointer input, because sometimes you might want to start the drag when you just tap this uh, composable once, but usually it should start when we uh, long press our composable. So we want to say detect tap gestures because you can see there is also an on long press callback. And this is the one we want to specify here. On long press, this will give us an offset. So an offset is nothing else than just an, an X and a Y coordinate on our screen where we basically started that long press. We don't need that here, but in case you, you do need to know where the drag was actually initiated, um, this is the place where you can find that out. And then thanks to that drag and drop source, what we can do is we can say start transfer with a certain transfer data. And now at this point, it should all get clear what we should also do here in OnDrop and why we have this uh, weird mime type and mime type to explain thing here because with every single drag and drop interaction, every single drag and drop action, we need to also attach a so-called clip data to that drag and drop interaction. So you might already know clip data when you actually hit command C on your laptop and you copy something, which could be a file, that could be a normal plain text, could be an image or so. And when you do that, there of course needs to be some kind of memory that that stores the information about what was copied. Because if you copy a plain text and then hit command V in your file explorer, for example, you of course don't want to paste that plain text in that file explorer. You only want to do that if it's actually a file that you copied. So there needs to be a way to say, hey, um, I copied a file, I copied a plain text, so that the location where you paste something to actually knows if it should paste something there. Or if what you copied was actually not intended for the file explorer for um, some kind of text editor. So and it's really the same for a drag and drop mechanism here in Compose because when we drag something here, that is pretty much just us copying something. And when we drop it somewhere, then we paste this dragged item. And of course, sometimes it's necessary for us to transfer certain data from this first box to the second box. Imagine you implement some kind of file explorer functionality in your app where you want to be able to maybe drag and drop a file into a folder then of course the folder where you drop this file needs to know which file you actually dragged. And that is what we can do with this transfer data, which we can simply create with a drag and drop transfer data. And here we then attach this clip data object, which we can create with clip data. And we can, for example, um, have a normal plain text. That is what we do here, since we don't really want to transfer any data, since it's just a static text. But in the end, here at this point, um, which is actually a little bit misunderstanding since um, it should rather correspond to whether we want to um, stop the drag and drop and whether this drag and drop target should accept this text here when we drop it. But when we do that, we pretty much just check, okay, is the clip data that was actually attached to that drag and drop interaction mime type text plain? So is it just plain text and not maybe a file or so? If it would have a different mime type, then the drag and drop would not be accepted by the target box. And that is what we can really define here. So clip data, you can see you can also transfer URI, which might be very useful for transferring files. We can even transfer intents. Uh, we can also have HTML text. So if you want to uh, transfer specific text that, that might have some kind of formatting with bold sections, with uh, italic sections and so on, you can also put that here in your clip data. In our use case, we're completely fine with just a plain text. Need to give it the label of just text. So you can think of this like a key we can use to identify that specific um, plain text item. And we need to give it a, a value. So the actual text, which could be drag me anything you want here. And then the moment we start the drag and leave it at one of these drag and drop targets, this function will be invoked. It will check whether this box should now process this drag and drop interaction, which it will check. Okay. Is that item actually a plain text item, which it is in our case? So it will make that um, drag and drop interaction pass. And then the on drop function will be invoked, in which we can then finally update our index to the new box where we drag this into. And just because I want this to be a full tutorial, I also want to show you how you could now extract this drag and drop data uh, that you might have uh, dragged from one box to another. So again, could be a file path that you uh, drag to a specific folder to finally uh, then perform the move operation. And in here, we could just say we have, a, we have a text, which we get from this event. We need to convert this to this Android drag event. And then we have access to this clip data object where we can say, okay, um, let's put this in the next line. We uh, get an item at the first index. So the very first item of clip data here, we only have one and then refer to its text. So that is the actual value of this drag me text. And we could then just take this and print it here. 
Um, so drag data was text, something like that. And then we can just say, okay, we have our drag box index. We update it with the current index of the box where we now um, stop the drag. And then we return true to say, hey, we handled the drop. And that's already it for the core functionality. Um, I will show you a little bit of customization potential here in a moment, but I already want to try this out. So we can take this composable, call it here in main activity instead of this greeting by just saying drag and drop boxes. Uh, we do need to assign this inner padding. So we say modifier dot padding and pass in this inner padding. And if we then launch this, we should hopefully see something similar, of course, with different colors. There we go. And if we now take this drag me text, we can take this and drop it here, for example. Yes, that is looking very good. We can take it and drop it in every single of our boxes. Very cool. In most cases, you will be fine with that because the default behavior is when we drag this, we do see the composable we're actually dragging with a little bit of transparency here. And then when we drop it, this um, disappears. If you want to customize this, how the composable actually looks like during the drag, then you can do this here in our drag and drop boxes by going to our text. And for this drag and drop source, we can also specify a parameter, which is the draw drag decoration, which just gives us a draw scope, so something uh, we also have in a canvas. And with a canvas, you just have unlimited potential to customize this. Just to show you something really simple, we could say we draw a rectangle, give it maybe a red color. And by default, this rectangle will just fill uh, the whole size of our canvas. So we don't need to further configure this. And if we now relaunch this, then take a look here and you will notice that we have overridden this behavior. No, actually not. For some reason, it does not work. Uh, let me relaunch this. Draw a rectangle. Yes, no, okay, that was just an Android Studio bug. So if we now drag this, we do see this red rectangle. Of course, the text is now not visible anymore because we have overridden this behavior, um, this default one. Uh, but if you need to customize this, uh, how, how this pretty much looks like during a drag, then you can use this draw drag decoration. We don't want this here, so um, let's just comment this out. We launch this and then we get back our initial behavior. Awesome. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Down below, you will find a link to more advanced Android premium courses. So do check these out if you want to become an industry ready Android developer. Other than that, thanks so much for watching. I will see you back in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye bye.